So apart from these four components, activity, service, broadcast, and receiver and content provider, there are few additional topics are required. Okay. So we call as the additional topics we call as what? Advanced Android. The additional topics we call as advanced Android. So now we'll see what we are going to discuss in this advanced Android. We'll see what we are going to discuss what in this advanced Android. Okay. So in advanced Android, so mainly we are going to discuss 10 topics we are going to discuss in this advanced Android. Mainly in this advanced Android, we'll discuss what? 10 topics we'll discuss in this advanced Android. First, we'll discuss a concept called Okay. Before going to discuss that concept, let me explain. So, what is the database in our Android? What is the database in our Android? The database in our Android applications is SQLite is a database, right? So, SQLite is a database for our developing the Android applications. So, storing the data in SQLite database is having two problems. You can store the data in SQLite database, you can store but there are two problems to store the data in SQLite database. For example, you are creating an application you are creating. You are creating an application you are creating. And the application is stored some data in the database. The application is stored some data in the database. Okay. The application is stored some data in the database. The application is stored some data in the SQLite database. Storing the data in, I mean, storing the data in your phone database, I mean, SQLite database is having two problems. Two problems are nothing but one is how many people can access this database? How many people can access this SQLite database? Only one person only can access this SQLite database. Correct or not? Only one person only can access this SQLite database. Other, other people cannot access this SQLite database. Only one person only can access this SQLite database. That is the first thing. There is a first disadvantage. Only one user only can access the database. Second thing is nothing but how much data you can store? We can store very limited data. We can store very limited data we can store in the SQLite database. So these are the two disadvantages. These are the two disadvantages of storing the data in the SQLite database. These are what? Two disadvantages of storing the data in SQLite database. You know, if you want to, if you want to overcome the two problems, I mean, my requirement is what, you know, my data should be accessible from anywhere from the world. That is the first requirement. It should be accessible from anywhere from the world. That is the first thing. Second thing is there should not be a limit for storing the data. There should not be a limit for storing the data. I want to, I want to, I want to store the huge amount of data I want to store, but that data should be accessible from anywhere from the world. That's why we will not store this data. We will not store into the mobile database. We will not store. We will not store the data in mobile database. We will not store the data. Okay. So in place of this mobile database, we will not store the data in mobile database. So we'll store this data. We'll store into some database servers. We'll store. We'll store the data in database servers. We will store like we are having few database servers like SQL server, MySQL. There are different database servers are there. SQL server, next. MySQL, Oracle. Like we are having different, different database servers are available. So we'll store this data, we'll store into any one of these database servers. We will store the data into any one of these database servers. We will store like SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle. Okay. So if we store this data into any one of these database servers, there is no any limit for these database servers. You can store the huge amount of data or large, large databases you can maintain in these database servers. And second thing is nothing but even you can provide this data to other users also. You can provide this data in the worldwide. You can you can give this data to any user. You can give the data. But problem is nothing but this communication is not possible. I mean, your mobile your mobile application, mobile application directly cannot communicate with the database servers. This communication is not possible. This communication is not possible. 
this communication is what not possible storing the data in database server directly direct this direct communication is not possible boss this direct communication is what it's not possible so then what we had to do you are, you are telling like if you want to achieve the two goals storing the storing the huge amount of data and data should be accessible from anywhere from the world store the data into any one of these database servers but a mobile application directly cannot communicate with the database servers a mobile application directly can, cannot communicate with what database servers so what we have to do is this communication this direct communication is not possible okay so this communication is possible by using any one of the web technology by using any one of the web technology we can communicate with these database servers we can communicate by using any one of the web technology we can communicate with what these database servers we can communicate okay so here by using any one of the web technology like java dot net okay java dot net or php by using any one of the web technology by using any one of the web technology we can communicate with these database servers you can communicate by using any one of these web technologies we can communicate with what database servers we can communicate these database servers you can communicate so directly database communication is not possible from your mobile application but this communication is possible so you can communicate with these mobile web technologies you can communicate from your mobile application we can communicate with these web technologies you can communicate from these web technologies these web technologies is going to store the data in this database it's going to store the data so your mobile application will communicate with the web technologies will communicate the mobile application directly cannot communicate database servers it will communicate with what any one of these web technologies it will communicate these web technology is going to communicate with what database servers okay this is the present architecture in the market this is the present architecture in the market in this way the applications are communicating I mean the present applications are developing by using this architect following this architecture okay your application data has to be stored in any one of these database servers sql server or mysql or oracle any one of these database servers so directly we cannot communicate with these database servers you cannot communicate directly this communication is possible with any one of the web technology so by using any one of these web technologies we can communicate with database servers so from our mobile application we'll communicate with these database servers we'll communicate but here there are few challenges are there so imagine imagine at the here at the client side i mean the device side we are using a technology called android technology we are using we are using a technology called what android we are using right android means internally what is the programming language java is a programming language java is a programming language and you have a requirement of communicating with the dot net you have a requirement of communicating with what dot net system so here i told you there are few challenges are there challenges nothing but now we have a requirement now we have a requirement of providing the communication between a java and a dot net now we have a requirement of providing the communication between two different technologies one is java second thing is what dot net now we have a requirement of communicating between these two technologies so if you send a java code if you send a dot net system cannot understand the java code right if you get a dot net response a java system cannot understand the dot net response so now we have to provide a communication between these two technologies we have to provide a communication how you provide the how you provide the communication between these two technologies we'll discuss it on how to provide a communication to two technologies before that before that just let's take an example i want to provide a communication between two different people boss i want to provide a communication between two different people let's take i want to provide a communication between two different people i want to provide a communication for example one person is from ap one person is from ap so his mother tongue is telugu is his mother tongue. one person is from ap his mother tongue is telugu okay 
so one more person is from let's take one more one more person is from maharashtra his mother tongue is marathi for example okay so now the requirement is you wants to provide a communication between these two people you want we want to provide a communication or how how these people do two, two people can will communicate for example if the telugu person is given any input in telugu this maharashtra person cannot understand the telugu input at the same time if he is given the response in marathi the telugu person cannot understand the marathi marathi rest marathi he cannot understand okay so the first thing if you wants to provide a communication between I mean two different people what is the problem here telugu I mean the marathi person cannot understand telugu telugu person cannot understand this marathi right that's so why we have to say boss don't talk with your native languages either either in telugu or marathi because you cannot understand them so that's why use a common language use a common language first thing if you want to provide a communication if you want to provide first thing is we require a common language requirement right for providing a communication first thing we require a common language requirement this is the first thing. common language common language is required for providing a communication next is it only the common language is sufficient you know Uh, there are two people are talking in english but even though even though they, they are talking in english they cannot understand each other because it's a butter english or maybe you know uh, what are the rules they are following maybe the what are the rules of rules one person is following maybe he, other person don't know the rules okay so is it com- common language is sufficient for communication for providing a communication to two people apart from that common language even both has to follow the same grammar rules apart from the common language both has to follow what same grammar rules both has to follow then only we can provide a communication otherwise you cannot provide the communication you cannot provide so first thing is a common language second thing is a grammar rules both has to follow the same grammar rules then only we can provide a communication between two two different technologies so common language grammar rules both has to follow the same grammar rules and the next thing is nothing but there should be a medium to transfer the data here when the two people are talking if they are if it is a face to face communication if one person speak any word how that word will deliver to the second word by using some medium i mean air is a medium or if they are they are talking in a phone so phone is a medium okay so if you want to provide a communication between two people so these are the three para- there are three things required a common language a grammar rules and a medium common language grammar rules and medium these three are required for providing a communication between two different people okay so now here in place of this java and .net i mean in place of this telugu person and marathi let's take we'll take an example of two different technologies java and .net here also same thing even if you want to provide a communication between two different technologies also first thing is what we required some first thing both has to follow the same com- same language had to use boss don't communicate either in a java or dot net use a common language called what xml or json use a common language called what xml or json in case of technologies in case of technologies that common language is nothing but xml or json okay and second thing is nothing but grammar rules this rules will be defined in the grammar rules will be defined by using some protocols rules will be defined by using what protocols there are different protocols are there like http protocol ftp protocol like we are having different protocols are there different protocols are there so here in case of technologies the rules will be defined by using different protocols next what is the last one medium there should be some medium to transfer the data in case of technologies so here that medium is nothing but either it may be a local area network the medium in technology is nothing but it's maybe maybe a local area network or it may be an internet it may be a local area network or internet a local area network or internet okay so these are the three things so if you want to provide a communication between two different technologies we require a common language grammar rules and the medium basically 
providing a communication between two different technologies providing a communication between two different technologies or two same technologies this concept is called as what web services providing a communication between two different technologies or two same technologies it may be a java to dot net a java to php php to java php to java php to dot net dot net to maybe providing a communication between two different technologies two different technologies or same technologies so this concept is called as what web services this is a definition of web services providing a communication between two different technologies or two same technologies this concept is called as what web services okay one of the hard topic for a mobile application developer see even if you go to any interview first they are going to ask you boss do you know the web services concept or not how to communicate with server because it's mandatory 90% of the every android developer responsibility every day is nothing but this is only communicate hit the server get the response from the server and present that data to the user as per the user requirement okay this is every every developer responsibility now okay so here there are two types of web services are there the two types of web services is one is the soap based web service there are two types of web service one is what the soap service and restful web service there are two types of web service are there one is what the soap based web service and second thing is what restful web service So there are two types of web services are there: SOAP-based web service and RESTful web service. I mean, in the present market, uh, SOAP is a legacy web service. Of course, SOAP is having its own priorities, and REST is having its own priorities. I mean, uh, REST is lightweight, and in the present market, more most popular web service is nothing but RESTful web service only. Most popular, especially for the mobile application developers. Especially for the mobile application developers nowadays, the people are using the RESTful service. Max, you can find the restful service only you can find. Okay, so we'll discuss both services. We'll discuss the soap based web services. We'll discuss as well as restful web service. Also, we'll discuss. Okay, but before we, before discussing this web services concept, before discussing the web services concept, first we'll discuss this XML and JSON concept. We'll discuss first. Before discussing the web services concept, first we'll discuss what XML and JSON concept we'll discuss. Okay, in our advanced Android. Now, advanced Android. The first topic we'll discuss is XML. Now, advanced Android. First, we'll discuss what XML concept we'll discuss first. Then, after that, we'll discuss the JSON concept we'll discuss. First, we'll discuss XML JSON because internally the data is internally the data is transferred by using this XML and JSON format will transfer internally. Okay, so so that's the first. Sheet. You need to have a strong knowledge on what exactly this XML and JSON. So then we'll understand what exactly the web services communication, how to communicate with the server by, okay, by using web service concept. Okay, so there are two types of web services are there, SOAP and REST. We'll discuss both web services, we'll discuss how to communicate with the SOAP service and how to communicate with what? RESTful web service. Okay, next. So these are the three major con these are the three major concepts apart from the basic four components activity service and broadcast server and content for provider these are the uh, main topics okay next if you take any application in the market if you take Ola Uber or any application if you take in the market okay one of the common requirement in the applications one of the common requirement in the application is nothing but displaying the maps one of the common requirement in the applications is what displaying the maps okay so if you want to display the maps if you want to display an android so we need this google maps concept in it so if you want to if you want to display maps if you want to display in your android application so it's not a part of android displaying the map is not part of android it's a third party library it's a third-party library. Google is providing. 
Google is providing a library for displaying the maps. Okay, so we require this Google Maps library. We require for displaying the maps. Okay, require the Google Maps concept. We require next we require the Google Places concept. One is Google Maps. Second thing is what Google Places. I mean, this Google Places called by using these Google Places, we can find the nearby information. You can find by using these Google Places, we can find what nearby information you can find for example my requirement is i want to develop a sample application i want to develop i want to develop a sample application i want to develop for example i'm very new to hyderabad and in hyderabad also i'm very new to amir pet okay uh, i'm developing an application i need the data when the user is available in particular place for example amir pet i want to get what are all the near available restaurants in amir pet I want to get all the available restaurants in Amir Pet. So who is going to give that information to you? Boss, these are all the restaurants are available in Amir Pet. Okay, or these are all the schools available in SR Nagar. These are the available colleges are available in so and so XYZ place. Okay. So Google Places is going to give that information. Almost all. This Google Places is providing 120 plus supporting types of information like schools, colleges, hospitals, pharmacy, okay, bar. Next, like cave, bake cave. So almost it is providing 120 plus supporting types. It is providing and information is providing this Google Places concept. Okay. And the next most important concept is nothing but Google Cloud messaging. Next most important concept is what? Google Cloud messaging is the most important concept. Google Cloud messaging. Okay. This Google Cloud messaging means. I'll tell you what exactly the purpose of this Google Cloud Messaging. This is also another hard topic in the market. The Google Cloud Messaging. Okay. I'll show you the application. I'll show you with the help of the application. I'll tell you what exactly the requirement. Okay. We'll take on real time requirement by based on that i'll tell you that gcm concept i'll explain what is the purpose of gcm concept okay. so my requirement is I am developing an application. I am developing. I am developing an application. I am developing for my tutorials. This core Android, advanced Android, iOS, core Java, advanced Java. So basically, my requirement is. I mean, I want to give all my videos, recorded videos. I want to give as an application. I want to give. This is the requirement. Okay, this is the application requirement you understand the requirement right okay so i developed an application i developed and i released this application also i released in the market luckily 10000 users are installed my application how many users 10000 users are installed my application my requirement is for example if i if i if a new video is added if a new video is added my requirement is i want to give the information i want to give to these 10,000 people I want to give the information let's take in place of 10,000 let's take 1 lakh people are install this application so my requirement is whenever the new video file is added whenever a new video is added I want to give the information to all these 1 lakh people I want to give the information okay for example if I added a new concept in the core Android or advanced Android I want to give that information I want to give this all these 1 lakh people I want to give the information so how can I give the information to all these 1 lakh people because a new video is added so in the application so how can you give the information to these 1 lakh people see the available options with me is one is you can you can send a SMS you can send 
you can send sms you can send you can make a call you can you can make a call and you can send an email you can send these are the three available options with me you can send sms you can send and you can make a call and we can send an email you can send and the last thing is nothing that nothing but we can send a notification you can send it just give me a minute just one second Oh, someone is sent Venkat broadcast message. How will be the information is for using broadcast message? Broadcast message. So these are the uh, four available options with me. SMS, call, email, and notification. These are the four options. Let's take the first option, SMS. You know the least market, I mean the least mar price in the market. For sending in a one lakh SMS, for sending an SMS to one lakh people, the provider is going to charge you 16,000 rupees. The provider is going to charge. This is the least market in the, the least price in the market. If you want to send an SMS, if you want to send to 1 lakh people, if you want to send an SMS, how much you had to spend? We had to spend 16,000 rupees. We had to spend for sending an SMS to 1 lakh people. For sending an SMS to 1 lakh people, how much you had to spend? 16,000 we had to spend for sending an SMS to 1 lakh people. This is the present price in the market. Okay, see, it's not a one. It's not a one time thing. One time one, right? See, every day, every day or weekly, weekly once I'll get a new video file. I'll upload into my a video tutorials. I'll upload. So every time spending a sixteen thousand rupees means it's a huge amount for me. Spending a sixteen thousand rupees just to give the information for one time. It's too expensive. It's not one time also. It's not a one time. It's a repeated thing. It's every every one week I want to give this information I want to give. It's a too expensive. It's going to reach the maximum people it will reach, but it's what? It's too expensive. Okay. So that's why I'm not using this SMS approach. I'm not using. What is the next one? Call. Making a call to one lakh people means it's it's more expensive than this sixteen thousand. Because if I want to make a call to 1 lakh people, minimum I have to recruit recruit a 100 to 200 people I have to recruit for giving the information to these 1 lakh people. Meaning I have to start a customer care, I have to start and I have to appoint minimum 100 to members, 100 members appoint, I have to appoint just for making a call to these 1 lakh people. Okay. So making a call also, it's, it's too expensive than the normal SMS. Practically it's not possible also. Okay. So next email so email approach email approach is okay fine it's okay it's going to reach the maximum people it will reach but the problem is nothing but if you send an email if you send where you will get that email because there are some there are some categories in the email promotions social promotions social and priority priority promotions and social right generally as it all for example let's take my case there are three three options are here if you take your email inbox, there are three options are there. Primary, social and promotions. If you send an email, if you send, where you will get? You will get that mail, you will get in the promotions you will get. See how, how we got the Java code, code geeks, how we got here, Ray Wenderlich. In the same format, if you send also, you will get the, you'll get the email you will get here. 
I don't know how many people are, how many people will do all these promotions. Simply what I'll do, you know, I'll select this all and I'll select the delete button and select. Because you'll not get, you'll get a lot of promotions you are getting. So basically I'll not get that much time to read all the promotions. Correct or not? So to reach to the maximum people, I mean the developer no need to spend any money for sending an email also. Developer no need to spend an email, any money for sending an email and it will but it will not reach to the maximum people because the email you will get in which category promotions category you will get a lot of mails you will get in the promotions so users will not reach all the promotions right simply is going to select all and delete part okay this is the next approach email approach so it is going to reach to the maximum people the people will not see that one the promotions okay and the last thing is nothing but notification see out of this one lakh people all the one lakh people are using the Android phones only because if he's using Android phone, then only he can install the application, right? Total, I have one lakh users. So if you are using the one lakh users, we can send, we can send as a notification. We can send. We can send as what? As a notification, we can send. We can send the information to all these one lakh devices as a notification. We can send. Okay, okay, notification we will send. What about this cast and all? First thing, if you want to send a notification, if you want to send, I mean, I, I'll sit in my chair in my office and if I, I click the send button, all these one lakh people has to receive the notifications. Okay, so here, how will, how will send these notifications from the server is by using a concept called Google Cloud Message. How will send the notification from your I mean from the server to Android devices the concept is we can we can we can do that one by using a concept called what Google cloud message or another name for this one is nothing but push notification another name for this that this concept is what push notification meaning server is going to send the notifications server I mean the web application is going to send the notification to all the Android users we call it as push notification I mean, this push notification, notifications concept, sending a notification to your Android devices concept is possible with the Google Cloud messaging concept. Or the other name for this one is what? Push notification. What about the other things, cast and all? First thing is, you don't have to pay any money for sending the notifications. First thing is no cast. First thing is what? No cast. You don't need to pay any money for using this Google Cloud messaging service. No cast. Second thing is nothing but no limit. Boss, if we have a hundred contacts, you can send a notification to hundred people, thousand people, one lakh people, one crore, ten crores, thousand crores. That's, that's, there, is, there is not a limit. There is not, there is no limit for sending the notifications. Okay. And in a single day, you can send n number of notifications you can send. In a single day, you can send what? n number of notifications. N number of notifications we can send. So no cost, no limit. Okay. And third thing is how much data we can send as a notification. We can send 4 KB of data we can send as a notification. We can send 4 KB of data we can send as a notification. The notification lifetime is 7 days is a notification time initially. But now they increase from 7 days to 30 days they increased. Meaning the server sends some message to you, the server sent a message to you at that time, at that time your mobile is not having the internet connection, then what will happen? And some server sent a notification, at that time if you don't have an internet connection, whenever you have an internet connection, in queue. yeah, it will wait in a queue, it will wait for up to 30 days. Okay, so after, after 30 days automatically it will expand. And it is 10 times faster than the normal SMS. Ten times faster than what the normal SMS. You know, if you check this WhatsApp and normal SMS, it is which one is going to reach fast? Of course, SMS is going to uh, this WhatsApp message is going to reach fast than the SMS. So these are the advantages of using this Google Cloud messaging concept. These are the advantages of using this I mean, notification push notification by using Google Cloud message. So now I need I don't need to worry about this sending this uh, message. Whenever I add a new notification, what I will do is I'll send a notification. I'll send boss. 
a new video is added in so and so, in so, and so technology or even I will give that free information also I will give for example but basically it's not a free application it's a paid application user has to purchase the money he has to purchase for accessing all the videos you know I want to give some information also some promotions also I want to give like for example uh, a new year offer okay get 30% discount like these kind of thing I want to give the information so that kind of promotions and all the things I can do by sending these notifications okay so these are the this is the next important concept Google cloud messaging the next after that we'll discuss material design concepts we'll discuss next after that we'll discuss a concept called what material design in this Google material design concept and this Google material design basically we are having a component called activity in this activity also we are going to we are going to learn how to design the screens with different UI components like buttons, drop down menus, text boxes, image view components. The user interface creation part also we are going to discuss in this activity part we will discuss the UI creation part. But here we are going to discuss the basic UI components we will discuss. We will discuss the basic UI components we will discuss like buttons, drop down menus, text boxes. We will discuss the basic components we will discuss. But in the present market there are some advanced advanced UI components are there in the market like recycler view, card view, recycler view, card view, skittle menu, uh, snack bar is snack bar, okay, toolbar, snack bar, toolbar floating action button in short we term as fab floating action button toolbar floating action button navigable drawer so these are some of the advanced UI components in Android these are what some of the advanced UI components in Android okay of course we are having some basic components also there for example in our in our core activity I mean in our, in our activity component one example I'm telling you in our activity we are going to design the UI components with, with, with different we are going to design the screens with different UI components okay so there is a component called list view gallery and grid view list view gallery and grid view so those three concepts are replaced with a component called recycler view of course there are some drawbacks also there there are some drawbacks in the core UI components to overcome those drawbacks okay so there are some a few advanced topics are there okay in the material design we are going to discuss recycler view and these topics we will discuss one more thing we missed that is a ripple view so these are the advanced ui components in app these are the advanced ui components so we'll term as it's a material design material design ui components okay finally in your application development we had to use these advanced ui components only we had to use Okay, the core and core Android we are going to discuss few UI components we are going to discuss because directly if I explain this recycler view and all you cannot understand. That's why core UI comp core in the core Android activity we are going to discuss some basic UI components and here we'll discuss some advanced UI components in Android material design concepts. Okay, then after this next we'll discuss a concept called graphics programming. Basically, in this graphics programming, we'll discuss how to display some uh, small, small animations. So graphics, okay, because it's a prerequisite. Uh, in few applications, you'll get a requirement of displaying some graphics or some simple animations if you want to display. Then we use this graphic programming library. We use graphic programming concepts we are going to use, okay. And for displaying the graphics, there is a third-party library. For displaying the graphics, there is a third-party library called Coco Studio is a third-party library. You know, one is one of the one of the best library for displaying the 2D animations and 2D games. You know, if you want to develop the gaming kind of applications, if you want to develop, or if you want to uh, display some animations, if you want to display, one of the best framework is nothing but Coco Studio is a framework. Okay, so we'll discuss graphics programming with Coco Studio. Graphics programming with what? Graphics programming with Coco Studio we'll discuss. Okay, so material design concepts, graphics programming, and graphics programming with what? Coco Studio. Graphics programming with Coco Studio. Okay, so these topics we'll discuss.
Next, the last important concept, the most important concept in the present Android application development, that is retrofit. The most important UI comp the most important topic in the present market is nothing but this retrofit. What is this retrofit? Basically, this network retrofit is a framework or a third party library for communicating with the web service. I told you that one of the common rest, one of the common operation in the nowadays is every Android developer is hit the server, hit the server, get the response from the server, hit the server, get the response from the server and display the data to the user. Hit the server, get the response and present the data to the user. This is the common, this is a common operation every day what the Android developer is doing. Here, challenge is nothing but hit the server, get the response from the server. Hit the server, get the response from the server. So here, for this one, it will take some time to hit the server and get the response or not. It will take some time it will take to hit the server and get the response from the server. To hit the server and get the response from the server, to make it faster, to make your network calls faster, then we are having a library called what? Retrofit is a library. And I'll give a short comparison. I'll give like I'll show you what exactly this retrofit. Briefly, just let's try to understand. Basically, earlier, earlier to this retrofit, there are a few libraries. I mean, there are there is a concept called Wally library. Asynchronous task is also there. Wally is a networking library. A lot of retrofit, retrofit to make the HTTP calls. If you want to make the network calls, if you want to make, then we use this retrofit. We use and retrofit is. Uh, definitely the better alternative to Wally in terms of easy to use performance, extensibility, and other things. Okay, it is a type of it is a type safe REST client for Android. I told you one of the common responsibility, one of the common responsibility nowadays for every Android developer is hit the server and get the response from the server. Meaning we are calling the web service we are calling, and even the web service also the most popular web service is mean. The preferred web service in the present market is RESTful web service, right? So it's a it's a library. Retrofit is a library for making the RESTful web service calls okay, easy to easy to use, performance extensibly, and other things like the performance wise, it will give more performance to call the RESTful REST calls, calling the RESTful services by using this retrofit. That's why even. Uh, if you go to any interviews nowadays in Android, the people are preferred pref preferred this strongly recommended this retrofit. Was do you have a knowledge on retrofit or not? How to communicate with retrofit? So apart from these four components, activity, service, broadcast receiver, and content provider, apart from these four components, you need to have a knowledge on these six, uh, these ten topics. You need to have a knowledge: XML, JSON, web services, maps, places, cloud messaging, and material design. So these 10 topics you need to have a knowledge. Then you'll get a confidence. Okay, you can develop any type of application you can develop in Android. By using these 10 topics, if you have a knowledge on that four topics, four basic components and these 10 topics, you can develop any type of applications you can develop in Android. These are the 10 topics. Okay, these are what? 10 topics we are going to discuss in this advanced Android concept. Okay. And I told you that the duration also I told you for completing this core Android part, for completing this core Android part, activity, services, broadcast receiver, and content provider. I required 20 sessions I required for completing this core Android part. 20 sessions I required for, sorry, not 20, 25 sessions are required for completing this core Android part. And 20 sessions are required for completing this advanced Android part. 
core Android and 20 sessions for advanced Android. So total duration is 45 sessions. So 45 sessions is a, our course duration. 45 sessions. Okay. So any queries? Any queries in this? In the content. If you have any queries, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we'll start the we'll start the programming part. We'll start from Monday. We'll start the programming part. We'll start the Android Studio, and we'll we'll create our first Hello World application. We'll create from Monday class onwards. We'll create because we're expecting a few more people to join from Monday onwards. Okay. So if you have any queries, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, we'll join on Monday. We'll join. We'll start our first Hello World program. We'll start from the Monday class. Okay. Let me know if you have any queries.